today we are going to do some dividing. So I hope that you all have some circles at home to work with, with me, and if not, grab them, and then we'll get started. Okay, so I have to confess that I have already cut my circles, but you might have circles that you haven't cut. And what we're going to do is this. First of all, how, uh, we don't want to talk about circles, let's talk about cake. I know, these are cake, this is a three little cakes, and um, oh, my question was how many cakes do we have, and then I just told you, that's so silly. Okay, we have three cakes, but we are going to divide our cakes with my friends here. How many friends do I have? That's right, I've got four friends, and I want to share these cakes equally with my friends. So before I do anything, what are you gonna do to your cake at home? Or your cakes? You should have three circles. That's right, you're going to have to divide your cakes, each one in fourths, okay? And you can see that I have done that. Now I'm going to just start to distribute my cakes so when you're ready, jump in and do that with me. I don't know, you might have some other kinds of little friends at home. So for turtle, I'm gonna start off. I mean, if I want to, I can just start off by giving everybody one piece of cake, but what if we start off by giving everybody two pieces of cake? Will that, do you think we can do that? Great, so let's, let's try that to start. I'm gonna put, I'm distributing. I'm gonna distribute these two pieces of cake and these two pieces of cake. Could we have done that a different way? We could have. And you might, even at your house, be doing it a different way. Now, does it look like there's enough for everybody to have one more piece of cake? Well, I think so, let's give it a try. One more for turtle, one more for giraffe, one more for mouse, and one more for snail. Now, were we able to distribute the three cakes evenly among four friends? We were. And how much cake does each friend have? One, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. Three out of four. So guess what? Three divided by four equals three fourths. Now, do you remember me telling you yesterday that um, I said that it was a preview for something we would do today. There's a relationship between division and fractions. So, I mean, anything that I write, I could say, you know, 11 divided by 55. Another way for me to say that is 11 fifths. Or I could say um, two divided by six. And another way for me to say that is two, six. Now, you can do that with manipulatives, but we can also draw it. So let's do that for one more of them. And that's teachers who really wanna emphasize that that fraction, the line, I like to just call it the dividing line, once we kinda of understand that relationship. So let's do another one. So I've got my three friends here but I'm only gonna have two cakes to distribute amongst the three friends, and I wanna know how much of the cake will each friend get. So let's draw our cakes. Will you draw with me? I'm not decorating my cakes at all. There's one cake, and there's another cake. How many pieces do I have to divide each cake into? Thirds. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but this is like, from when I was a kid, we call this a peace sign. Have you seen that? But you can see one, two, three pieces. And I know that I'm not dividing them perfectly, but you can sort of see. So each one of my cakes is now divided into three pieces. So now I can like distribute my pieces and we'll just use our markers here and arrows. So let's distribute the pieces, one here, one here, and one there. So I'm gonna draw now my pieces. Here's one piece, here's another piece, and here's another piece. I hope you're drawing this with me. 
Now, can you imagine or visualize what we're gonna do next? Yes, we're gonna do the same thing. <laughs> let's, let's use a different color. We're gonna distribute this other cake. Doop. We're gonna put another piece here. This is stretching my drawing abilities. And another piece here. There we go, and another piece here. All right, now we have distributed our two cakes, so I'm gonna erase them. How much of the cake does each friend have? Each friend has one, two out of three pieces, or we can say two thirds. And isn't it lovely, because again, any time we have a division equation like this, we can rewrite it as a fraction. So, let me just show you this. We could say like um, six divided by two. So when you see six over two as a fraction, you immediately know the answer because you know that it is six divided by two and you know that that equals, good job. So I just wanting you to see the relationship, division and fractions, and then let's begin to really refer to this thing here as the dividing line. Let me show you something else. <coughs> Numerator, denominator. So there's this wonderful relationship and we can understand it, it helps us out a lot. Okay, we've worked with things that we can move, and we've done it with pictures, but now let's apply the things we've learned and work from here. Now, teachers, if you feel like your student really still needs to be using paper cutouts, you must pay attention to that because every student learns at a different pace. So remember we said if anything we're dividing, this becomes the numerator and we've got the denominator. Alrighty, now to figure out how much cake each one of my three friends gets, does it work to leave my fraction like this? It doesn't, this is an improper fraction. So we're gonna have to turn our improper fraction into a mixed number. And there are lots of ways you can go, but I love the number bond. So what am I always looking for? That secret number, target number, the target number of one. But if it comes to thirds, what, what goes here? That's right, three thirds equals one. So how many thirds will I have left over here? Two thirds, good job. Alrighty, so teachers and students, remember when I've got a numerator and a denominator that are the same, that is like a secret ninja one, okay? It's like, oh, I can always find, I'm always looking for that one. There it is, now we can put this together. One and two thirds. So in this case, Every friend gets a whole cake and a little bit more, two thirds more. Now how about, we, we did it, we said it a second ago or something similar. If I had six cakes, then I would distribute them among the three friends, how much would each get? That's right, then each friend would get two cakes, but we got a number that's below six, so we're gonna have our mixed number there with our fractions. Isn't this fun? I just love it. I could do this all day. So let's take that same idea here and just show it another way. Again, we're just looking at all the relationships and teachers remember to say to your students, show me another way. You know how to do your long division. This isn't very long, but three goes into five, how many times? It's really all that we're talking about. Um, and then we say one times three equals three. We subtract, and now watch what happens. This remainder becomes the numerator, and this number becomes the denominator, okay? So we're gonna look at another one, and we'll use this as process here in a second. Okay, let's say that I had a ribbon and it was seven meters long and I needed to, to divide it in two because I was gonna do you know, something with one half of it and something with the other half. Uh, so what we're gonna say is seven divided by two. And we can show that with my model here, okay? And let's say I wanna know then what is the length of each half? Well, 
We've been doing it a lot of different ways, but the, the process I just showed you was to do this. Okay, so two times what gets me really close to seven? Two times three gets me really close to seven. Let's get six and we're gonna subtract seven minus six equals one. This is my remainder and I'm gonna take that remainder and make it a numerator and this number here becomes my denominator. So this value here is three and one half. What's that value? Yes, it's also three and one half. Let's check it to be sure. Three plus three equals, good, six. One half plus one half equals one. Six plus one equals seven. When we're working with fractions, I really like checking your work a lot because we have a lot of potential for errors. So if we check our work, we can be really sure. So what's another way? Can you think of another way we could have shown? That's right, we can start off just with our fraction, seven, seven halves. What we've been doing is looking for that secret ninja one, and we're gonna find out we're gonna have to do more than one step in this case. So secret ninja one, if I'm working with halves, we're going to have two over two, that's one. But there are more ones in here, right? So let's try it again, two over two. That's another one. All right, so what we have so far is seven halves minus four halves, and that equals three halves. Do we have another one in there? We do, so we're gonna have to pull another one out of here. Okay, another secret ninja one. And then what do we have left? Then we have our one half, let me erase this so it doesn't get in the way. And we've got our one half left. Now, teachers, for a lot of you, you're gonna look at this and say, what, what in the world, why would we do that? But for some students, thinking about it this way is gonna help it make more sense than looking at it this way. However we need to do it, we wanna know multiple ways that we really understand the concept. Fractions are hard work, but they're also so much fun. And I am really proud of how well you've been sticking to it and hanging in there with me. All right, I hope you enjoyed doing the rest of your work and I can't wait to see you back here next time.